Though I tagged along on Dives with my dad when I was a little girl, I didn't actually pick up a spear of my own until I was 24 years old. Calais Fernandez and Andy Tomasese were the mentors who took me under their wings. They trained me at diving. Today, we're reuniting, but years ago, they traded in their spear guns for bows and arrows as they became hunters of the land. And that's why our reunion is starting off on the mountain instead of the ocean. We're at Haloa Aina, a reforestation project of iliahi, or native Hawaiian sandalwood trees. By planting native trees, both condensation and native birds have returned to this mountain, which had once become a stressed environment due to cattle and invasive sheep. When the ungulate population gets too big, it threatens the native forest. Kale and Andy agreed to dive with me again as long as I try bow hunting first. And this is the perfect place to start. Hi. Damn it. This is all like a whole another language to me still. Like, I mean, it's similar to like when you guys put my first spear gun in my hand, like I had no idea, like the real mechanics of it at first, you know? Yeah. And it really seems so intimidating compared to a three prong. But everybody has to start from somewhere. So right. not, nobody comes in knowing, every, knowing a lot, right? I haven't stopped spearfishing since they trained me. But Kalei and Andy have become bow hunters instead because they lost too many close friends to free diving. The most dangerous part of free diving is called shallow water blackout. It's when a diver holds their breath too long and passes out in the water. If there isn't a partner right there to save the diver, it becomes a fatal mistake. But it's it's very it's very much like spearfishing. I remember you saying that from well, Mike, way back Mike's in the day. Told me that a long time ago, before I hunted, he's like, it's just like spearfishing. You'd like it, and I was like. How is like nothing like that? <laughs> yeah. And then as I've gotten into it, it, it you find out it really is. It really yeah. Is. yeah. Like just without current and no breath holding. It's just <laughs> yeah. way safer. It's like a safe. It's like a safe version of spearfishing. That's like that's why I do it. It's a good. It's a good. Um, it's a good transition for when you start getting older and have kids. Right. Right. You know, just the diving was just getting a little too nuts. No kidding. Yeah. I went back to it because of so much loss in spearfishing and how dangerous it got. So I kind of, my passion moved more of it to bow hunting. So safer, obviously, when you get kids at home, some bad, bad stuff happens. We all know that, that comes with the territory and spearfishing, so. Well, that was the thing with us. I think we always just had a very established role, like, you know. I was there to watch. When you said something, I listened, you know? Mm -hmm. I am shadowing you, I am listening, and when you tell me to do something, I'm gonna do it, you know? And now I feel like I get to start all over again, being the green <laughs> horn and trying this now. Yeah, so we'll just get up, we'll roll out of here just before our first light. So time the sun come up. Six? No, 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 no. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. And I almost worked. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Kimmy, I don't work with us anymore. <laughs> I know. This morning, Kale will mentor me at hunting and Andy will go on his own. So, I guess you guys are gonna go this way, right? And we'll go this way. <laughs> and I'll go this way. Six now, we can check in at 8.30. If you get an animal, <clears throat> oh, can you bring it back whole so I can help you clean it? Yep. Okay. Yeah. No, not if. When? Go get one. <laughs> go get one. I need to practice my cleaning. No. I have no idea how to call sheep, but Kalei is encouraging me to try and we're actually hearing them answer back.
Listening is everything. I can hear sheep walking towards us even though the forest is too thick for me to see them. And now that I can see them, I still have no shot due to the thick wall of bushes between us. And just like that, they're gone. Meanwhile, Andy spots a herd of sheep in the distance. It's right on that tree line. It's up that hill, top of that hill ridge. So I saw them at the top of the ridge. I'm taking a landmark off of that tall tree and that dead tree. They're right at the top, kind of feeding their way into the forest. We'll get up close to there and then just start going real slow and just see what we can see. Just go real slow. got him. I'm just glad we got him. That's the main thing. I, I hate it if we uh, wound something. So I try to put every effort into finding them if you, if you do shoot one. So we got him. We have some food. Well, if we can't catch sheep, we can catch flowers. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It was right there. I don't know what I, I don't know what I was thinking. Like my instinct was just like, Get closer, get closer, get closer, get closer, get closer. Yeah, no. You know, and... You um, get closer with the arrow in your... Right, exactly. Bull. Well... We... We... We had an opportunity. Yeah. Oh, I... I didn't have an opportunity. You don't know what happened. I think, I think the wind swirled in that section that we were, because it's like this indention, and they're coming down the hill. Congratulations. I want to see your... Oh, thank cat. you! Holy moly! <laughs> Yep, you did get one. Oh my gosh. Job, Andy. Oh man. I'm glad. It's the, it's the roller coaster. You think right. you smoke it? Highs, lows, you and think you back did to good? high again. Oh, I lost it. <laughs> back to found it. <laughs> right on. Clean. Yeah, I want some, yeah. some cleaning lessons. Yeah, let's do it. What's that? <gasps> What's that? What is it? It's sheep. Yeah, it's a sheep. Hi. Uncle Andy got that one. Uh, Andy got that one. Yeah, Mama, Mama got some flowers. Congratulations. Hey, <laughs> you think we should eat this sheep? <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. I agree. We're gonna hang this sheep from the tree and we're gonna pull off all its fur so we can eat it. Okay? You gonna help us? But I know I was so mesmerized the first time I helped like take apart an animal like a deer it's because it's just like it's so crazy how the skin just comes right off and all the meat is just like in its own like compartments it seems you know. One thing I would, that struck me was that there's no blood. Right, that's true. It's a very clean job. Hey, you're not supposed to be cutting me. You're supposed to be cutting the skin off. Skin off. 
Yeah, over here. Put, use your knife. There you go. Good job. This afternoon, we're switching it up, and Andy's now guiding me while Kalei is on his own. Now Andy is my official guardian, and you don't have any baggage <laughs> slowing you down. I expect great things from you. I have my own baggage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. Go get him. You guys go get him. Good luck. Good luck. They're in that pocket back there. They winded us in. They moved down the hill, so we're gonna try and go around. Hopefully cut them off. Now, where are we going? So, if we get to that bush, okay. there's another sheep on the other side, and that's within 30 yards okay. on that side. I love this. Crawling around in the grass, Getting to know the smell of the dirt and the plants, it is like free diving because I'm immersing myself in an environment more than I ever have before. There's one right here. Okay, knock it out, knock it out. 20, 20 yards. Okay, drop, drop. Take your time. But after all of the buildup of the stock, it sure hurts when the moment comes and I absolutely blow it. I had a perfect shot. <laughs> oh, that was perfect. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. It's okay. That was nerve wracking. Andy gave me the perfect opportunity only to watch me punch my trigger and shoot a rock. Meanwhile, Kalei spots a ram right in the middle of an old dirt road. He lines himself up directly behind a tree and uses it to close the gap. Kalei's ram is down and his mission complete. If it wasn't for this tree, probably wouldn't have that ram. <laughs> It's looking like I might have a second chance if I can get my act together on time. The adrenaline and energy that surges through me whenever I have an opportunity makes it so hard to focus on the most simple task. There's one right, right, right on the left of me. It's probably looking right at me. Do you see it? Yep, yep, just draw slowly. I can't believe I did it again and yeah. misfired. This is it. Release can be. Don't fuck it up. Don't put your finger on the trigger. Don't you know you're on. Look at this. It's wrapped right against that tree. Shaky fingers have no business holding on to sensitive releases, and it's as if I've learned nothing. I am so frustrated with myself. 
But as I'm still trying to wrap my mind around it all, more rams show up. Finally, a shot I took on purpose. Nerves always make me a little weird, but I love how Andy keeps his cool. He told me the yardage on that first one. I just accidentally, like, I'm used to like being able to put my finger in it, but it's because I'm so nervous and excited. But this is also more sensitive. That one I meant to pull trigger, but it looked to me like the arrow was a little high, but it looked like he went like that. But he popped, it sounded like a good shot. Yeah. I hope, 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 I hope. This is so fucking intense. <laughs> What it's all about. Oh my god, this is crazy. <laughs> it's right there. Oh, he's toast. My ram is right behind the hill where we shot it, but we have to put a knife in it. The victory of my hunt and sorrow for my prey are simultaneously running through me. It feels crazy that learning to harvest in such a simple way is what reveals the complexity of it all. It's a different thing, bow hunting, than having to put a knife in your, in your animal. I mean, really, like, there is no experience more real and intimate and accountable. It makes you just, yeah. the weight of that accountability when oh. you are almost trying to comfort an animal as you feel its life leaving it because you're taking its life. Yeah. Like there's, n I don't know anything that makes me understand my footprint more. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But I think accountability is like the best thing in the world. It just comes with. Yeah. There's no doubt you took that animal's life, and you f feel like yeah. how real that is. And it's crazy all the stages. After I shot, I was just like on this like almost like giddy giggly high which it's not like I mean disrespect it's just you're overcome with like all this adrenaline and then again and seeing the animal and it all becomes real and it's like sad and heavy and all these things and then when you're at this stage then it's back to food and connecting the dots like it's just it is such a crazy mental <laughs> trap <laughs> Today, my goal is to cook our sheep, and I want to start with the shanks, a part that's often thrown away on game animals. <laughs> Andy is helping me saw the shanks also buco style. Now all we need is a fire. Andy, do you always bring a magnifying glass in hopes to? It's in his side hip at all times. <laughs> yeah, and a so coconut husker. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a gun, it's great. I mean, I guess it's a good forever way to do it because it doesn't run out of fuel. So did you really start, you, did you start that with a magnifying glass? That little smoke, yes, yeah. Yeah, Khalid did that. I'm gonna try. Here, you try. You gotta get. Here, shoot it right in this. First you gotta hit his finger with it. And then back like that? away. Out more. Probably back away. There. There, there you go. It is. Wow. Right there. That's perfect. Wow, I feel like a sorcerer. I do. I feel extremely powerful doing this. Oh, amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. 
Not bad, huh? That's really cool. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna invest in a magnifying glass and like keep it, it in my pocket. Okay. Yes. I'm searing these shanks with salt, pepper, and some fresh thyme, and then putting them in a pot. I'm cooking down onions, tomatoes, peppers, and fresh herbs to make for a beautiful red sauce. I'm adding in bone broth and all of those chunky vegetables, and we're gonna let this simmer over the fire all day. I'm making cheesy polenta, grilled vegetables, and this pot of stewed osobuco. I love taking the throwaway cuts and making them absolutely shine. And I love even more that this meal is the result of Kale and Andy mentoring me again. Their patience and encouragement while guiding me on this hunt reminds me so much of our early years when I'd follow them around in the ocean with a spear. It feels good to enjoy a meal that we all harvested together again. I made you a little plate. Thank you. Oh my God, this looks amazing. Yeah, dig in. Dig in, dig in, and I'm gonna join. <clears throat> so good. This meat is just falling off the bone. So soft. It's amazing. I think we need to go shoot more sheep. I know. We'll just take the shanks. <laughs> what I liked was that it wasn't like easy. Yeah. You had to work for it, and then you missed, you missed, and then you got one. And it, and it seemed like you you kind of had the highs and the lows of hunting. It just kind of come with it. You're gonna go through that a bunch, even when you get better. <laughs> yeah. So how are you guys feeling about going diving? <laughs> I don't even know the last time we all went diving. Like, I really... I haven't dove in so long. I guess we should. It'd be good to get in the water, though. Yeah. I haven't done it in a while. Hopefully it's like riding a bike. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Let's do yeah, it. Let's do that. I know they're apprehensive, but I can't wait to get our gang back in the water. I believe it. No, I was watching the wind advisory and they said it was going to blow this weekend. Yeah, small so, craft. Yeah, Our captain, craft Benda, is an incredible ahi fisherman and an old friend of Kalei and Andy. Because uh, the mountain so big here on the Big Island that it blocks the wind. And we're fortunate to have um, beautiful weather like this 90% of the year. Yeah. And have the mahi been around? There's been mahi around. Um, the only thing is the mahi's been kind of small, uh, but these buoys been holding, or other state buoys been holding mahi you know, off and on. And we can go down there and check them out and see what we see. Oh, and I haven't seen Calais in like 20 years too. Right? <laughs> kind of a little reunion for me too. Meant to be. Surf shorts and rash guard. Hope you don't mind. No, that's always been your style. Andy was Some always that. Style. Yeah, he shot the marlin with no fins. Look, cobwebs. <laughs> <laughs> Since I don't have gloves, if somebody, if I shoot something, someone else has to grab it. <laughs> But you're like the bare minimum at today. He's Andy is minimalist. always bare yeah. minimum. Hopefully the legs will go. You know what I mean? Like that's the key right there. I hope I get lucky. That's what I need. I need some luck. I'm just grateful right now. This feels amazing. Would love some fish, but just really extra grateful. We're jumping in at a buoy that's anchored by chain to the bottom of the ocean. This buoy creates its own ecosystem by growing algae on it that attracts small little fish, and they attract bigger fish, and even sharks. Still, blue water diving can be so hit or miss. The fact that we're seeing both bait and sharks is a great sign. And soon we see what we're looking for. A young mahi-mahi swims up and Kale is able to take a shot at it. Andy is going for another mahi, but he sees that Kale's shot is not gonna hold, so he turns and gives it a backup shot. And this is so true to their characters. These guys have taught me that good teamwork in diving is everything, and that group success is always the ultimate goal.
A little while later, another mahi comes in, and this one comes straight to Kalei. His shot goes right through the spine, disabling this mahi immediately and canceling any fight. <laughs> it's like you're a manifester. You're like, I ain't gonna pull sugar unless something swims up to me and it's point blank. And I was like, that thing just kept coming and coming. I'm like, shoot, shoot, holy cow. And it was like point blank, boom. That was insane. <laughs> Just stoned it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> oh, baby. Slanged it. Yeah. It just swam straight up to him. Like, I just look over and see if he's just sitting out. Well, he just stayed. He didn't even move. He was just like. Oh, well, if you come in, you yeah. come in. <laughs> What a success, but on the way back in, I happened to mention that Buddy's favorite fish is a kule, a tiny bait fish. And Kale and Andy suggest that we get him some. I find it absolutely hilarious that even though they're not competitive in situations with high rewards, they'll still make a little contest over who can shoot more kule for Buddy. Andy won and actually got three fish in one shot. These two days have fulfilled my heart more than I could ever say. Buddy, look at this one. Mm. Wow. That's big one. Say, I'm standing next to an eagle. And I do this eat Which one is your favorite? The big one or the little one? The eel. Can I have a kiss? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have one. Mom, what's the one? We're going for one last dive today, hitting the reef. But before we do, I want to make Buddy his favorite fish breakfast. So yummy, huh, baby? Mm. Can you get my fish? You want me to go get my fish? Yeah. I will go get my fish. I'm going to get fish. You like the little ones or the big ones? Oh, pressure on the big ones, yeah? You must have the ones. And the little ones. Or the big ones. The big ones. <laughs> Here's another bite. You want to take your Justin Lee, whose family runs Haloa Aina, where we hunted, brought us to one of his favorite dive spots. He's still waiting for his own dive partners to arrive, but he shares my giddiness of Kalei and Andy diving again. It doesn't look bad, right? No, it, it doesn't look great, but it, it, does, doesn't it definitely look great, doesn't look bad. But just to have the opportunity to come out to your side of the island and dive these waters, it's normally pretty slim chances. Exactly, you just kind of got to take uh, whatever creak of a window yeah. to jump through yeah. and, uh, you know, small kind fanboy over here. Right. You know, <laughs> we got a couple of legends, Andy and Kale. Mm -hmm. You know, they've paved the way for so that. many of uh, of the local boys yeah, that uh, really wanted to push and see where fish fishing can take them. It's like a hurricane's coming. Yeah, it looks so like. We uh, go. I know you have your own crew you're taking out today. Yeah. Um, but thanks so much for for bringing us here and for letting us hunt Haloa Aina. That was so special to us. Oh. And. Um, Come on by afterwards, we'll cook some fish and some fish? hang out. And some sheep maybe? And some sheep, yeah. Yeah. Turf and turf. Awesome. Be safe out there. Thank you, you too. I love shore dives. I love the hiking, the swimming out, the getting in and out of the water. I think I just love the human powered adventure of it all. Maybe do like a cheerleader entry? How's a cheerleader entry look? I'm dropping down because I see one of my favorite goatfish, a munu. I'm able to line up, take my shot, and bring it up to the surface. But as I was returning to the surface, I saw a moo in the distance, one of the tastiest yet hardest fish to shoot. I signal to Andy and he's on it. Andy takes his drop and then uses the boulders to sneak up on the moo and take his shot. Landing a moo is a big deal, and I couldn't be more proud. Mm 
Meanwhile, Kale's three-pronging for one of our very favorite fry fish, kole, little brown fish that live by the rocks. Another way we do teamwork is by diving down and helping the diver out by taking the fish off their spear. That way they can reload and potentially shoot another fish on the same dive. We all trade off with the spear until we have enough kole. going in, Kale shoots a moo too. This is incredible. I decide to take a couple drops into deeper water and I'm able to get an even bigger munu and an omilu. In a world where you can't talk, it is surreal to be with people that you know by heart. Understanding each other's thoughts and body language and knowing that we trust one another with our lives, it has a way of taking our friendship to a deeper level. Over the years, Kalei and Andy have raised me in the water, training me to be a better diver and inspiring me to be a better person. In their presence, I will always feel loved and I will always feel safe. And the genuine fun that we have on top of all of that is simply the best. Back at our cameraman parents' house, Andy, Kalei, and I prepare our catch. Good times. Right. Kalei and I <laughs> clean the kole and get it ready to fry. Andy is making fresh coconut milk to go in a Thai coconut curry with vegetables and mahi-mahi. Wow, you have a big grass. Yeah. That's a juicy coconut. Very juicy. I haven't been diving in forever, and that was, that was really fun. The cooking, the drinking after, and camaraderie that we still have, and, and, and the trust that we still have in each other. I trust these people with my life. We're all parents now, yeah. too, you know? Like, even though it can be utterly distracting at times, like, I love, like, at the end of the day, just like seeing Buddy hanging on to Uncle Kale or, you know, our kids playing for the first time, yeah. like, and hunting with the purpose of, like, feeding them. Like, that's a whole new trip for me. Yeah. I love it. As friends gather and this meal comes together, I think about how my connection to nature is my key to happiness. It's the respect for the work of the harvest, the appreciation of the food, and the people who have taught me this form of love. They have given me such a true sense of belonging to the world around me. And no matter how much time goes by, I feel it in me every day.